In this video, we're going to look at what the domain of a rational function is. And before we can look at what the domain of a rational function is, we have to remember what domain is. Domain is a set of all inputs of a function that will produce a real solution. And if we remember that a rational function is a fraction, one of the keys in the definition was that the denominator cannot be zero. So, to find the domain of a rational function, we're going to set the denominator to zero and figure out which solutions will not work. When the denominator is zero, the graph, if we were to graph this, would have a vertical asymptote or a hole. Vertical asymptote is going to be a line that's going straight up and down. A hole, a lot of times on a graphing calculator, you might not see. And when we start looking at simplifying rational functions, get a better understanding of where it's going to make a hole or where it's going to make a vertical asymptote. So let's take an example and actually let's look at it. So here, f of x equals 5 over x. So my domain is x cannot equal 0. Every other number will work. The only one that will not work is exactly 0. And we can't say x is greater than 0 or x is less than 0 because those numbers, other numbers, will work. And we can't say x is greater than 1 because the decimals will also work. So if we were to look at this at a graph, you'd see that it has a vertical asymptote right here on 0. So you notice it gets really close to it, but doesn't actually touch 0. So now we have a general idea of what domain of a rational function is and how we're going to actually go about finding it by setting the bottom to 0. Let's actually look at more complicated problems to actually have to do some work with them. The first one we're going to look at is f of x equals 2 over x minus 3. Now, just as with every other function we're looking at domain, we're going to set, in this case, the denominator, x minus 3, equal to 0. So you can see, x minus 3 does not equal 0, and that's going to give me my domain. And we're going to solve this problem. So we add 3 to both sides, and we end up with x cannot equal 3. So my domain of this function is x cannot equal 3. Every other number will work except for 3. Now let's look at one with an exponent in the bottom. So we have x minus 5 over x squared minus 4. And again, we're just going to set the denominator to not equal to 0 to figure my domain out. So x squared minus 4 does not equal 0. Add 4 to both sides. We get x squared does not equal 4. And then we're going to take the square root of that and we get x does not equal plus or minus 2. This is one of those keys to remember. Whenever you take the square root of a number, it's always the positive and the negative version of that because 2 times 2 equals 4, but also negative 2 times negative 2 does equal 4. So in this case, we actually have two restrictions on our domain. So x can equal positive 2 or negative 2. Notice in neither of these problems did I even look at the numerator. This 2 didn't matter, neither did the x minus 5. So in terms of our domain, we are only having to look at the denominator of the function. Let's look at one a little bit more complicated. We have x minus 4 over x squared plus 5x plus 2. Now, unlike the last two, we have two x's in the denominator. So now we have a quadratic equation down there that we have to actually solve out. And unfortunately, this one doesn't factor really nicely. So we're going to actually use the quadratic formula for this one. So we have to get a, b, and c. And we're going to plug it into that negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And as you can see here, I plugged all my numbers in. And again, whenever you're plugging numbers in, always use parentheses around your numbers. It's going to save you a lot of trouble with signs. And we simplify it down. Luckily, in this case, we didn't have to actually simplify down the square root any and actually reduce it. So this one just comes out to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. Now, in this case, that's going to be the restriction on my domain. So my domain is x cannot equal that. This isn't a simple number like the last couple that we had, like 2 or 3 or 5 there's, or 0. In this case, it's actually a complex problem. It's going to give me a decimal. But that's fine. That still is a restriction on my domain that I still need to actually react to and leave there. All right, let's look at one more. Because there's a lot of little things when we're looking at domain that might have caused you trouble. So we have x squared minus 5x plus 1 and x squared plus 10 on the bottom. 
So at first glance, this looks like the second example we did when we had the x squared minus 4, except there's one slight difference in this one. We have x squared plus 10 cannot equal 0. We subtract the 10 from both sides. So we get x squared cannot equal negative 10. We take the square root. And as you notice, it says x cannot equal the square root of negative 10. We can't take the square root of a negative number. That if it gives you a complex number or an imaginary number. So and in terms of our domain, we're only looking at real solutions. So in this case, since that's not a real solution, there's actually no restrictions on this one. So my domain is all real numbers. Every number that I plug into this will work. No number I can plug in will give me a zero in the denominator. So those are a few examples at looking at the domain of a rational function. And it should give you a good overview of all the little things that you could look at when you're doing the domain. The key thing is making sure you remember the quadratic formula, make sure you remember how to factor, because that's going to help you simplify down the denominator to get those solutions a lot easier.